But, but I am uncomfortable with, huh? Hmm? You know, that young people answering, huh? Yeah. What? I'm sorry that the socialization I went under, that was unacceptable. That those were the kind of thing that got you. I'm sorry if you're visiting from, from other places in the world, but, but, but that stuff got you a backhand. That, that, that stuff got you a sitting down. That, that stuff got you a wailing. That, because what they wanted you to realize that someday mommy and daddy will not be here. And what they want to know is manners will take you around. we got to pass this on to another generation. Whether you're talking to me or your teacher or a stranger. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Pardon me. Excuse me. Don't just walk past me. If it's my child or your child, stop them. The word is excuse me. That, that we have to work harder at maturing a next generation for socialization. We, we can't cuss at them and expect them to get mature. I know you're going quiet just like you. You, you, you can't. I, I see parents using major language to children who are way beyond major language. They're, they're too young to be introduced to that kind of, I don't hope they never get introduced to it, but, but, but you are destroying, and then you tell them be quiet. You shout at them for 30 minutes. Ah, shut up in my house. But you are the example. You are the person they're emulating. We've got to learn how to instill respect in our next generation. I'm almost done, but the right thing, mommy and daddy, is not to go to the campus and try to fight the teachers. And to do it in front of the children. Even if the system is wrong, do it right. Go to the office, launch a complaint, make an appointment, meet with the department head, call in the teacher, discuss the matter, and you all come out like a team saying that's been dealt with, now we move on. But as long as parents go to schools trying to fight teachers, then we have a breakdown in the socialization. If mommy and daddy could do it, well then I could box up anybody in my car who I don't like. Then we have the heart to come to school talking about my good boy and my good child. That we've got to be to a place that, that we're not just telling them to do what I say, but do what I do. Got to teach them to leave people things alone. But mothers, you got to check these bags. These mothers, I got something for fathers. You got to check these bags. But when they come home, in fact, in fact, don't wait for them to call you and tell you what they bring to school. You know what you sent them to school with. And so when they come home with something extra, where does this come from? Who owned this is? And they're never too young to stop because if they feel it's acceptable at kindergarten, they'll take it straight to high school. But you, if they can't explain you who it is, march them to school, put it on the teacher's desk, and, and tell them, this is not theirs. And they will not be bringing nothing like this home again. But we reached to a place where it's good, it's seemingly okay to be jealous, it's seemingly okay to cover, it's seemingly okay to desire somebody's wife or somebody else's husband. It's, it's okay to take off all your clothes. It's okay to work and, and do the things that the world is doing. There has to be a standard that is uniquely behaving. There has to be something about us that makes us different. That we are in the world and not of the world. That we are the people that God would put on in this dispensation. If I'm the only one, that's all right. As for me and my house, I'm determined to serve the Lord. But if you have that kind of feeling, you need to rise up in this dispensation before we slide off in the abyss of chaos. For we end up in a place we cannot return. And then we got to mature mentally. And we've got to get comfortable being alone. I am very uncomfortable with some of the dialogue of men towards women. That we've gotten to a place where we believe that women are property. I hear some of the conversation might change. How could a human being be 
your teens. That, that we've got to be careful that, that we have young men taking the lives of our young women because they believe it's their things. That, that, that we've got to get it right in our minds that we are equally made, that we, we were wonderfully made, that each human being is uniquely made. And, and unless we get our minds right, I, I said this in the early morning, I was talking with some of our police officers, and they were sharing with me some of the challenge they have in the mentality of the young people. Now, I'm dealing with the young people because uh, predominantly those who are shooting each other in the head are between 13 and 40. And I know you say 40 we old, but, but relatively, we're in the middle of the mile. Amen? Amen. But, but, but here's the challenge. So you have young people that will walk up to somebody shoot them up and then when you lock them up they, they sit in the car and when they realize the consequences for their actions they cry like they age so you have teenagers who are going before the court crying oh i didn't know I, 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 as if they were not prepared mentally for the consequences goes back to socialization that unless we help them see that if you do the crime you will do the time. But the challenge with our society, and I've heard this from some of our lawyers, uh, I had a good joke the other day, the lawyer told me that, that his client told him, uh, you see, just get me off, I just get me off in law and order. <laughs> yeah, I, I see them in law and order. Uh, they, <laughs> you know what I mean, Mario? I, I watch the episode in law and order, and the fella get off on a technicality. See, see if you can get me off like, they lack the mental capacity to understand that this will have consequences. Some people are willing to die for a hundred dollars. They are willing to lose their life for one hundred dollars. Some of them, and you say, well, no guys, they, they make a decision that they will rob somebody walking on the road, and, and most of them do not carry more than a hundred dollars. And, and they make the mistake by thinking everybody they put a gun in their face don't have a gun to return. I leave that alone. And, and so sometimes they meet their match. Sometimes they meet the wrong person. And then when their life is gone, you, you try to wonder what were they thinking? What was going on in their mind? And then last but not least, we gotta grow spiritually. What I like about this text is Jesus thought he was ready because the people thought said he was deep. You gotta be careful of people pushing you where you aren't ready to go. See, when you mature spiritually, you know when it's ready. You know when God is saying it's now time. The older you get, the more you can tell when someone's saying the wrong part. I know how old you are if you caught that. There, there, there are people who will push you in areas they are scared to go. But when God has assigned you to something and he's saying it is your calling, he will open doors. The Bible says that no man can close. But when you are spiritually ready for the next assignment, I'm going to head out here now. When you're spiritually ready for the next assignment, God will assign someone to validate you. Now I know you big and bad and you can do it on your own, but, but, but even the bar, someone has to stand to represent you. That, that someone has to declare that this is a person of competence. That, that no matter where you go in life, you're gonna find out that somebody has to prepare the way for you. You might be more anointed them. You might be more called than them, but God has anointed a mother to know when one season ends and when one season begins. I look back at my life and I don't understand when my parents came to conclusion that a child that graduated from high school at 15 
did a two-year degree, was ready to fly on a plane all the way to Nashville, Tennessee, and would stay there and, to, and complete a degree. I don't know how many 17-year-olds I would put on a plane and send them to Nashville, Tennessee. It tells you that mama knew that I was ready, knew that I was prepared, knew that in the next season of my life was to open up. Hear me now, they never got on a plane and checked out the school because we could not afford to go to Tennessee. We couldn't afford three tickets. The first time my parents ever stepped foot in Tennessee State University, was for me to walk across the stage and for them to shout, that's my boy. You got to know a parent knows when you're ready. They know when it's time to release you into the next season. So in Luke chapter 2, she puts the finger in his face and says, don't do it. But you turn it over to John chapter 2. She says, whatever he says to do. Sounds like two people got what I'm talking about. And mother knows when it's time for you to move from the back seat to the front seat. And so Jesus still got a fast mouth. And he says, woman, uh-huh. And she look at him and say, let's not go back there. I'm trying to release you today, but if you won't go back into detention, I'll put you back in detention. And she gave him that look. Don't. Don't do it. And, and she looked at the servant. She said, he's ready. It's not time for him to go to the next level. She said, whatever, whatever he says to do, you, you do. Touch your neighbor. Say, this was his first miracle. And his mother pulled it out of him. This, this was time to walk into his assignment. And the mother knew he was ready for his assignment. Jesus even didn't know. Jesus said to her, my time has not yet come, but, but sometimes it has to be a stirring of the nest. Sometimes you will never fly until the mother takes you and drops you into deep situations. That sometimes God will have a mother to put you in position where you're going to fly or you're going to die. And so when she released that on Jesus, Jesus then started to give instructions and he turned water into one. I stopped by to tell somebody today, you better thank God for your mother. You better thank God for the person that not only is responsible for you physically, but they can speak a spiritual blessing over you. I've been at the deathbed when mothers have declared blessings on their children. They have declared blessings on their family and then they close their eyes and said, I'm God. I'll see you later. That God has particularly gifted a mother to release you to the next season. Now I want you to high five your neighbor and say, thank God for mother. Turn to the next person who's a little more friendlier and say, thank God for mother. Now tell your neighbor, say, I'm ready. I'm ready for the father's business. I'm ready to handle the situation because somebody prayed for me. Somebody had me on their mind. I can remember mama in the iron board and while she was ironing, she would lift up the songs of Zion. Yeah? And when I heard her singing, I could, I could hear the voices of heaven bending in with her as she called down the presence of God in an iron room. I wish I could preach to you today that while she was cooking, she was busy singing the songs of Zion. She was able to call in the presence of the Lord. And sometimes we became we too sophisticated to tell mama, thank you. But it was the prayers of your mother that kept you here today. Would anybody testify, thank God for mama, if mama didn't come get you, if mama didn't pray for you, if mama didn't look out for me, thank you, Dexter, if mama didn't sacrifice and eat chicken wing and chicken foot and chicken gizzard and chicken neck, that she just wanted you to have the best. Hey, Chloe, wanted you to have a belly full while she eating crackers and drinking tea and you sit here like you always had it. Now God has blessed you to be a parent and you need to open up your mouth and tell God thank you. And while you are it, say the same anointing, the same gifting, the same calling that was on my mother, God, please, let it rest on me. Somebody say yeah. yeah. Don't mess with me 
your destiny. Somebody say yeah. yeah. So many dangers, toils and snares. I have already come. I was down, but I didn't know I was going to get back up. But thanks be to God, he had a mother that...